for tuning in tonight. This is Jason from Jabot LLC. Today we're going to be going through how to secure your computer from cybersecurity attacks to some extent, as well as how to optimize your computer. Today's video is brought to you by uh, a few different places, Jabot LLC, Salina Media Connection, Salvation Army, and a digital grant from the Saline County. All right, so let's get started. One thing we're going to do first is we're going to get you out of your admin profile, because when you get a new computer that's a Windows-based computer, you're automatically logged into an admin profile. And what that allows to happen is that if you have somebody get on your computer, they can immediately start installing software. So we're going to go through how to get you guys out of the admin profile. You're going to go down to the search block and type in users. And you're going to go to add, edit, or remove users. What you're going to do is click on add an account. And this is going to be the, eventually going to be the admin account. Uh, first, you're going to click I don't have this personal person sign information. And do that one more time. Add this user without a Microsoft account and you're just gonna create a user. We're gonna call it admin2 for this one. Click next. You don't have to do a password right now because if you do a password at right now, you'll actually have to put in three security questions. So what we're gonna do is change this to an admin profile. And then we can sign out of this account and change your account back to a standard user. So what that's gonna look like is actually, we're, gonna, we're not gonna log in to the other account, but I'm gonna walk you through it on here um, let's add another account and make it a standard user. So this one we're going to leave alone. This admin2 is actually an administrator. So you have an account here. We can actually um, change this from... Um, we're going to leave this one as an administrator and make the standard user. It's already defaulted back to a standard user here. So that's how you make an account. What you're going to do is sign out of your current account and sign into one of these other accounts. On a, on a regular basis, what you want to do is just use a standard user. Um, if somebody gets on your computer remotely and you're logged into an administrator profile, they can immediately start installing software on your, on your computer that looks for important information like social security numbers, phone numbers, credit card numbers, things like that. So you don't want to be using your computer as an admin all the time. So that's how to create an admin profile and use it separately from the standard user account. This is what you want to use on, on a regular basis. All right, next we're going to go into virus scans. So you go down to the search block here and type in virus. You're going to go to virus and threat protection. And there's two different scans you can run. You can do a quick scan, which is what most people do, as well as this should be running every night. We're going to do that just to start off with. And it'll start scanning the files for you. Uh, while we're waiting for this one, we're going to go into a different program called the, the command prompt and run something called an SFC scan. So while this is running, you're going to go down your search block and type in CMD, and you're going to click on run as administrator. You're going to type in SFC space forward slash S scan now. And what SFC scan is, is a scan that looks through all the Windows files and sees if it has any corrupt files and, or missing files, and it replaces them or fixes them. So we're going to let that run as well in the background. So these two things are running right now. We're also going to go through how to do Windows updates. So while these two are running, we're going to wait for a minute and go down here to the search block and type in updates. And click on check for updates. On this one here, you can click on retry all or you can click on scan now. Um, you can also turn on this get la uh, latest updates as soon as they're available. What that's going to allow you to do is have the latest updates for definitions for viruses. Um, so you can leave that on if you want, if you want to. Um, I recommend leaving it on. If you don't want to leave it on, you can just make sure you check for updates quite frequently, like more than once or twice a week. So this one doesn't have any updates currently. You can also click down on the advanced options. And I usually leave the get, get me up to date, I usually leave that turned on. And the notify me when a restart is required to finish updating, I leave that one turned on as well. Additionally, there's additional updates, updates down here. Um, currently, we don't have any here on this computer, but what you do is click this one, and there'd be a list of ones you need to install here, and you'd click all those to and, and tell it to install. So the SFC scan is almost done. I don't know if this one's going to have anything. Um, so this says Windows Resources Protection found crypt files and successfully repaired them. That's what you want to see. The only other two options is one, it didn't find any, any crypt files at all, 
and then three would be that it's going to, it's found corrupt files and was un unable to fix them. If you see that third one, then there's some issues with the operating system, it might need to be reinstalled. So the SFC scan is done. That's all you need to do. It found corrupt files on here and it successfully repaired them. On the quick scan, that didn't take very long at all. It found zero threats. Um, it scanned 42,993 files. But what we want to do is do a full scan. So we're going to go down to scan options and we're going to click on full scan and it's going to run a, it's click on scan now and it's going to run a full scan on your whole uh, C drive. That's going to take a little while. So we'll wait for that to come back later. Some other things you can do is if you have a video card, you can check and see if there's any video card files that need to be updated as well. For this computer specifically, it's an NVIDIA card. So you want to click on the GeForce Experience and see if there's any updates here as well. This is for the video card drivers. Yeah, it makes you sign in now. Give it just a second. Let me click and sign that in. Okay. I usually have this checked for automatically check and see if there's any updates available. Um, we're going to go to drivers and click on check for updates. It's always good to keep your video card drivers updated as well. Um, this one has the latest driver, so there aren't any to install right now. This is the most recent one, so that's good. If they did have one here, you just click on an install, and it'll get it installed as well. All right, on your C drive, you can go to your file explorer, which is this little guy right here, and go to this PC, and you can right-click on this. This is your C drive. This is the hard drive that has the operating system and most of your files usually. And go down to Properties. You can go to Tools here in the Tools tab, and you can click on Check to see if there's any errors on the hard drive, and this takes a little while to do that. You can also click on the Optimize tab right here and optimize the hard drive. This used to be um, what you do for mechanical hard drives. You don't have to really do this anymore with solid-state drives the way they are. And while we're waiting, for most older computers that are about eight to 10 years old or, or greater, uh, the biggest change you can make to your computer to help improve it is, is to remove the mechanical hard drive and put in a solid state drive. That is by far uh, a night and day difference. It'll be faster than it was when it was brand new. So that's always a good thing to do is replace that hard drive with a solid state drive. If you already have a solid state drive, then doing these optimization tips here will help keep that healthy. So it successfully scanned the drive, your hard drive. Um, no issues with the hard drive itself were found, so that's good. If you do find issues with the hard drive, that's the important part to uh, make sure that you're going to get those files taken off your computer before the hard drive fails. Um, we try to recommend a three-step approach when you're talking about hard drive uh, backups. We recommend, of course, the initial place is the one step, which where you're, you're going to have the drive on your computer. Two would be an external device somewhere that you use to plug in and restore your files. And then three would be an offsite backup or a cloud backup. So you back up your files in three different places if they're important. We're talking about um, the last time you had pictures of your grandfather, um, important documents like your wedding certificates, things like that. Those should be backed up regularly to an offsite device as well as a drive that's not just this hard drive. Hard drives can fail um, for very little reason. If you get a power search through the line, Anything like that could cause a hard drive to fail. So don't just keep your files in one little place. And the jump drives themselves, um, the jump drives are only good for just temporary moving files back and forth. Jump drives are not good for long-term storage. So don't use them to store your important documents over a long period of time. You should use that uh, either an external hard drive that's mechanical or a NAS or use an offsite backup like a cloud backup 
um, or a hard drive that you plug in and back up your files and then move those to a, a um, safety deposit box or somebody else's house, things like that. All right, so the hard drive's good. The SFC scan's done. This virus scan's gonna take a little while, but it's gonna scan all of the files. Let's see what it has for recommendations on our security suite. So there's a few things here. Um, I'm not going to have uh, the OneDrive set up. You can set up your OneDrive for offsite backup for a cloud backup on here. This is how you do that, and one way you do that. That's using Microsoft's OneDrive program. You can use that if you'd like to. You can also use Google Drive or Dropbox or one of those other kind of programs for your cloud backup. Uh, I'm gonna dismiss this one because don't, I don't wanna use that OneDrive. Um, account protection, you can sign in with the Microsoft account. That's going to get you into the same kind of thing where you're using OneDrive as your backup. I'm going to dismiss that one. But what I do want to turn on is this app and browser control. Uh, this is to help, help block unwanted apps and downloads on your computer. So we're going to turn that guy on. Okay, now we're all good. There's no other, other issues we have to have for suggestions on here. All right, let's go through how to set up Um, some some pop-up blockers. This program is called Brave. So what we're looking at is browsers. The browsers would be Microsoft Edge. They would be uh, Chrome, Firefox. This one's called Brave. Um, DuckDuckGo. Those are a few that are called browsers for how to look at your your um, stuff online. So we're going to download Chrome. I already have a pop-up blocker on this one, but I'm gonna show you how to do a new one from scratch. I always uncheck this, help make Google Chrome better by automatically sending in usage statistics and crash data. I don't let them see my data as much as I can avoid it. Click on download Chrome, save that file. Should have done pretty quickly. Go ahead and open this file here. It's gonna install the software. I'm going to go ahead and close the screen now. All right, you can make Chrome your default browser if this is what you want to be instead of Edge. Um, it's up to you. You can click on Set as Default and it, it opens this, this window automatically. And you can click on Set as Default and it make Chrome your default browser. Again, browser is what you use to go to Facebook, um, eBay, places like that, just different sites. That's how you get on the web. So we click on Set as Default and it's going to change that to Chrome. You can always change it back if you want to. It's up to you which one you use. Here's some of the browsers here, like I said, Google Chrome, Brave, Firefox, Edge. Uh, I don't know what the Edge beta one is, but we're going to ignore that one. Some of the browsers you can use. What we're going to do is install some, some pop-up blockers. So we're going to go to pop-up blocker for Chrome. And we're going to click on Add to Chrome. And it is an extension, so it runs constantly whenever Chrome is, is, is running. The only kind of sort of negative or caveat to pop-up blockers is that um, it might block a site that you want to see. So let's say you're going to go to your bank account and uh, you, you want to log in. Well, that login click might cause it to bring up a pop-up. Well, that pop-up is not going to come up because you have pop-up blocker on. So I'll show you how to turn that off as well. So these are the extensions here. These are what's running along with Chrome. Right now the pop-up blocker's coming up as well. So let's say you wanna to go to, I don't know, Bank of America.
when you click on the login, see they've got the login tab already here, but if they didn't and you clicked on login and it brought up another tab, it wouldn't work on the site. So on the, on the sites that you trust, what you want to do on here is click on this little guy right here. This is your pop-up blocker and go down to check, uncheck this for this site. So that means on bankofamerica.com, it won't run pop-up blocker if you don't want it to. So we're going to check that right here. Let's go to like you know, Bennington State Bank. And again, you'll click on here, if you want to click on the login page right here, um, click on the pop-up blocker up here and uncheck this because you know that for sure that this is a quality of site, it's a good site. So now those are pop-up blockers are turned off on the sites that you don't want a pop-up blocker to happen. But for everything else, you should leave this turned on. So now the pop-up blocker's on there. We're also going to do one called ad blocker. This is an ad blocker. This blocks ads that pop up automatically as well. I'm going to click on Add to Chrome like we did before. Add extension. And then now here's the extension tabs. That one's downloading. And then here's your ad blocker on as well. Again, same thing with this one right here. If you want to, I want to pin both of these to the taskbar so I can see them. Uh, if you want to turn this off, you just click on the little ad blocker and go down to pause on this site. If you want, let's go to say the Bennington State Bank again, or Bank of America. If you don't want it to open up pop-ups on here, you can click on this and go down to pause on this site. And now I won't do ad blockers on this Bank of America site specifically. All right, let's go through a few more things. One is how to save, how to save face, uh, favorites. On Chrome, you're gonna click on this little star right here. And I always shorten these down to whatever it specifically is. Like this is just going to be Bank of America for me. And you click on the bookmarks bar. We want to go in the bookmarks bar because this is gonna go across the top. Click on done and click on these three little dots right here and go down to bookmark and go down to show bookmarks bar. And now Bank of America is showing right here. And you can do this with any site, whether it be for Facebook, Once you get it popped up, then you click on the little star, um, call it whatever you want to call it. If you don't want it to be Facebook, you can rename it. Click on done. It's going to go in the bookmarks bar. And now there's Facebook. And you can just continue doing that as much as you want to. Click on the star. It's going to save it to the bookmarks bar. Again, I only, I only keep what I have to, so I'm going to keep on, take out the home part and click on, I can try to keep them short. Click on done, and now they're, they're up here at the top. This makes it really handy for you guys to be able to go to the sites that you guys go to a lot without having to go back and forth. This bar that I'm typing in here, here is called the address bar. This is where you want to go to to type in addresses for sites that you know are for sure legitimate sites. Click on the star, go down to, see that's a, that's a lot of stuff there. We, we don't want all that stuff, we just want, we just want eBay. And now you've got Bank of America, Facebook, Bennington State Bank, and eBay all up here at the taskbar. If you want to delete one of these, you just right click on it and go down to delete. And now it's gone. We've already blocked 16, just in this short period of time, we've gone to a few different sites. Ad blockers already blocked 16 ads. You can see that there. So these two help out a lot with the pop ups. What we see when we do cybersecurity threats or antivirus removals um, is that. If you have these two extensions here, it really helps out a lot. Uh, Microsoft Edge and Chrome all have this feature to be able to reset back to factory settings. On uh, Chrome, if you go to the three little dots and go down to settings, you can go down to the bottom and click on, that should be in one of these guys here. That's updating right now. Let's do Edge real quick while we're waiting. On Edge, you're gonna to go to three little dots, go down to settings. And right here, there's reset settings. So if you have a problem in, in, in one of your browsers where it's constantly popping up with stuff, you can click on restore de default settings right here and reset it. 
and that'll go back to at least the original factory settings for, for Chrome or Firefox or Edge. You can also set your default pages, like if you want to go on, uh, on startup. We want to, like say specifically you want to go to a specific page, you can click on open a specific page here, and click on add a new page, and let's say it's And now every time you open up Chrome, it should open up into, you know, when you're done, it's still updating. There we go. Let's try it again. There it goes. Now it's defaulting back to the page that I put in there. This is our page here. Um, if you go ahead and click on the three little dots and go down to settings, you can change that back to what it was, or you can just go down to restart, reset settings, and then it should go away. Again, I uncheck these report to Chrome stuff. So now when we close and reopen Chrome, it should go back to the default page, not my page. The full scan's done. It took a little longer, but it scanned 277,000 files. We have had instances where quick, quick scan does not find um, issues with Trojans or viruses, but the full scan did. So make sure you always run those whenever you can. You can also download another program called Avira. If you want to get a second opinion route, basically, it's another antivirus. It's a free download. You can click on here and install that. And run a separate scan from Defender. Windows comes with Windows Defender. It's free. It's a pretty, pretty robust antivirus already. Um, computers we have that come in that have had issues um, all have an antivirus like Norton or McAfee or Avast, Kerspasky, um, they all have them on there and they still get viruses because nothing can stop you as the person, as a user, from clicking on stuff that is, in, in a, is the wrong stuff. So like, uh, let's get talk about that too. When you go to the search page and you're searching for like a 1964 Dodge, well, let's not type in. When you're searching for stuff, try to avoid clicking on any of these ones that say sponsored links. I guess we could have gone to Chrome for this. It shows better in Chrome. So these ones say sponsored. If you see any that says sponsored, I would avoid it. There's the Avira coming up. Let's do something different like HP, Printer, Inc. There we go. So these ones that they say sponsored, I would avoid these or use extreme caution whenever you click it on, click it on those. Um, you should look for legitimate links. Uh, look at the address bar and see what's actually trying to go to. But I would avoid the ones that say sponsored like this one here. This might be legitimate, but I'm not going to take a chance on sponsored links. People have gotten really good about putting their sponsored links that go to sites that do pop-ups um, and pop up before like the HP legitimate ones. So just use caution when you're looking at that. This is where you can run a smart, smart scan with Avira. And this will run a scan similar to Windows Defender, but look for performance issues, viruses, outdated apps and network threats as, as a whole. And when this virus scan gets done, I always uninstall a virus. I don't leave it on my computer all the time. I just uninstall it when I'm done using it. Mainly because all of the antivirus programs just run in the background and they cause uh, a, a significant amount of resources to be, to be running while the computer's running. 
like if we go to a task manager, um, Avira's using you know some RAM here and some CPU usage. This was not out of the ones that are available. This is probably the the least resource intensive. McAfee and Norton use a lot of resources. While we're in the task manager, um, in order to go to the task manager, you're just going to click on Control Shift Escape, or you can do Control Alt Delete and then click on Task Manager. You want to go up to the startup, startup menu here. These are the ones that are going to start up when the computer starts up. So why that's important is because if you want your computer to start up fast, you don't need all of these programs to be running when your computer boots up. Um, we've disabled a lot of these here. Um, I disable almost everything besides the antivirus program. And I don't even need this, the logical logi one here. To, you click on, click on this, this here and click on Disable, and that's how you enable or disable them. Um, the more things you can have turned off on here, the better, with the exception of you want to, like I said, keep the security health system tray. Um, keep that enabled because that's going to run uh, antivirus when you start the computer. But other than that, I'd keep all these guys off here. You can also see your performance, see what's running, um, your CPU usage, memory usage, disk usage. Wi-Fi, so on and so forth. I'm going to click on Show Details on Avira. I found some outdated apps, um, piracy, but none of this is related to um, antivirus. On that specifically, I didn't find anything. Same thing, we can do a quick scan or a full scan. But now that we're done with that, I'm going to show you guys how to uninstall a program real quick. If you go down to the Windows block and type in Control and click on Control Panel, this is where you'll go to uninstall a program. And we're going to find Avira and double click on it and click Yes. And now it's going to uninstall Avira. While we're in here, if you want, after this one's done un uninstalling, you can go through your programs and see if there's anything else you guys need to uninstall. <clears throat> we have a lot of programs on here, but we use a lot of different things. Um, but this is where you go to uninstall programs. Okay, so we've shown you guys a, a lot of stuff today on how to optimize and protect your computer. We're going to show you guys how to add a password to your account real quick, and then we'll be finished up for today. If you go down to the search block and type in password and click on change your password, this is where you can go to and add a password right here. You can click on this little downward arrow right here and click on add. A, oh, we've already got a password on here, but this is where you click on here to click on add or change. Um, we can do that as well. And click on new password, confirm password, and then a password hint. This is where you're going to have a password. You have to be really careful with your admin passwords because if you only have one admin account on your computer and you add a password in there and then you forget it or lose it or somebody else adds it, um, you can do some things possibly to get out of it, but most times you are going to have to reinstall Windows or remove the hard drive and put a new hard drive in there and reinstall Windows on that um, if you have to get data off the hard drive. So we've shown you how to do an SFC scan, a virus scan, quick scan, as well as a full scan, uh, how to do an external hard drive scan like a, um, a Vira. We've shown you how to, to check your hard drive for, for errors, um, how to do pop-up blockers on your different browsers, uh, just pre pretty much a whole plethora of things that um, are very helpful. Um, if you guys are having issues with your computer being slow or having issues with pop-ups and you're unable to follow any of these steps, uh, please bring your device to a trusted professional like us um, and, and get those questions answered for you and hopefully get your computer fixed back up. Uh, my name is Jason Bathon. I, think, I appreciate you guys tuning in today. Uh, again, I'd like to thank the Jabot LLC people, the Salina Media Connection, Salvation Army, and the Digital Grant from Saline County. 
And if you guys have any questions, please reach out to us. Thank you.